two, and we are live now. There you go, and we're taking Discord questions. Yes. Yep. As Discord I questions. Right with my left hand, uh, like eh, a like a crazy man, taking super chat questions as well, and then uh, rando YouTube questions. Why not? On uh, the yeah. episode of Q and A. Uh, yeah. All right. Lead the way, Mr. Jab. Lead the All way, right. good sir. All right. Now, now does, any, it out. does anyone who we've kept waiting for like an hour have any questions that we want to start off with? Because, uh, sorry. Because, sorry. Yeah. Question for Chase. Do you mind altering substances? Do. Okay. Do mind altering substances which allow you. Access to the other side of your mind make it easier to communicate with those in your quadra, specifically the unconscious. In so what he's quadra, saying is, is he saying that you, like quadra, take, quadra, or like the four sides of the mind? No, 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 no. I think what he's saying is, if you're an INTJ and you take a mind-altering substance, will you be able to communicate better with other INTJs or ENTJs? Like if you're drunk, yeah. Yes, technically, if you drink a lot and you're in your ENTP shadow, you would be able to communicate better with other INTJs, yes. And no, this is okay. not something with which to base a romantic relationship on as a foundational situation. Right. It's not like, going to be good. In the yeah, it's run. like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we're definitely we're, we're definitely going to, uh, you know, get a little frisky this evening. But sure, let's let's make sure at least one of us is completely plastered first. Yeah, that's that's really something great to uh, build a relationship on, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely not uh, what I would recommend uh, at all. So, yeah. Okay, any other questions before we jump into the the backlog we have? Oh, here comes a mine. Here it comes. Oh, here we yeah. go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, okay. oh just no. Just a smart ass comment. Yeah, just, just a smart ass comment. comment. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. Got to gotta walk it off on this one. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> yeah, we were worried. How was my day How's going? Your day going? My day is nothing short of pure insanity, as usual. So, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, fair enough. Let's... Uh... Oh, let's do some announcements. We have some announcements to make, don't we? We do? Uh, yes. I think we posted a giveaway on Instagram and didn't tell anyone about it. So, yeah, that's um... right. We should probably talk about that. Yes, <laughs> it will be. Uh, so we have a coaching giveaway on Instagram right now. All you have to do is like the post, be a follower of the Instagram profile, and leave a comment in said Instagram post. It is there, a uh, free coaching giveaway. We're not going to force you to be like on live television for it or nothing. It's just, you know, standard private coaching-esque thing. And uh, we're going to be doing it, um, uh, announcing the winner, I think. I think we're announcing it tomorrow or Saturday, one of those two days. Within the next two days, it will be announced. And uh, we'll get that scheduled and definitely do that uh, session for you. Although, uh, good luck trying to schedule me uh, next week. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, do it the following week, please. Um, oh, yeah. With next week's schedule, uh, any comments on the stream schedule? The stream schedule uh, for next week is basically going to be completely canceled. Uh, I may have a few lectures going up here and there, but we will not be streaming at all next week. Uh, I have a lot of family ob obligations. Uh, I am driving to Washington State, and then I'm driving back from Washington State. It's going to be with, with two small children. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, but right. Yeah, definitely not streaming next week at all. So don't expect any streams. Uh, we'll have a few lectures here or there. And uh, I might be doing uh, some sneak peeks on upcoming content. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, season 14, which will be coming out right after season 10 is done. Uh, season 14, we'll be talking a little bit, just a little, a little bit about romantic compatibility stuff. Uh, so. Uh -huh. So uh, some uh, golden content that people have been waiting for uh, is definitely around the corner. Uh, not yeah. sure how that's going to be distributed, though. So we'll we'll talk uh, we'll talk about that for sure. On that note, uh, I'm gonna kind of just like come up with something right now. 
Um, I think in place of next week's typing session, because we didn't have one this week, I might come into the chat with you if you are all interested and we can have like a nice chat session. Um, maybe we could type some fictional characters together. I don't think we'll do it in the live stream channel. It won't be a live stream. It'll just be like a social event. I mean, if you are interested, we can do that. I mean, oh, yeah, we'd be meaning be to type... Yeah, I've been meaning to type some of these fictional characters, but the problem is it's not exactly something you want to put on your channel in the sense that bad writers will uh, cause you to mistype their characters. Yeah. And that's yeah, kind of right? not something I want. I want, you know, you to be endorsing like, yeah, here's this poorly written character. They are an INTJ sometimes, INFP sometimes, and then they're an ENTJ on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, like, on the weekends. <laughs> exactly. They're a weekend ENTJ for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So on that note, a uh, small community event, I will ping it out later in the announcements. It'll probably be at the exact same type time the typing live stream will be. Right. Uh, do you have any other announcements? Uh, season 14 is coming. Season 16, I uh, got three episodes left with that. And uh, season 21 is ongoing. I, we know that a lot of you are asking for some of the other types. It is coming again. I've been sick recently. And then I've been flying all around with my work. And then we have Thanksgiving. It's been, it's been a little rough. So, um, I am working though for Christmas to have like not so much downtime from the channel. Uh, we are working on like a mobile solution for me to be able to broadcast from essentially anywhere. So we're, we're working on that. Uh, so that is something we're planning on doing as well as actually like getting the GoPro figured out. But the final part, yeah, that's supposed to be the final part this time. I promise. I think I hope uh, actually showed up in the mail. So we should be actually able to switch over to the GoPro pretty soon here and be streaming yeah. from that. Uh, so it's been uh, exactly a bit uh, touch and go there. So, but anyway, Jab, uh, what's on the program tonight? What, what do we got going on? Uh, unless you got anything else, oh. Dad? Do we have an announcement as to the Discord server, or have we not? I that yet? I, I believe uh, good old Put and Pops uh, said we are not to make that announcement quite yet. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. No, I, without, I left at the end, so I didn't get yeah, that. Yeah, not not to speak w without speaking with certain uh, parties uh, first. Uh, <laughs> but yes, there is going to be something big going down with the Discord server uh, that will be, uh, you know, changing the uh, the mods are working on it uh, very soon, and uh, we're going to be. I, I don't know if we're making any adjustments to the rules or anything, but if there are any adjustments to the rules, it will be rolled out at the same time as this new thing that we're kind of like pseudo teasing about right now. Uh, but, right. uh, but it will be, it will be good for a lot of people uh, to consider. Um, and right. uh, potentially uh, we may see some uh, old faces uh, from back in the day, uh, back on the server. So, just uh, throwing that out there. Uh, we are discussing things, so we'll get right back to you on that. So, uh, Mr. Jab, uh, yep, let's fire it up. the questions now. Um, okay. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just a yes or no question. Will you do a series on the best ways types learn from each other slash teach each other? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so I think this is the mental mentee relationship between the times. Yeah, hold on. Let me uh, let me actually open up uh, my Trello here and uh, <laughs> go to my uh, lecture ideas request card. And uh, what was the question again? Just want to go through. My it was to, it was to do with the series on the best way times learn from each other. So the mental mentee relationship between types. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I will be doing that. Uh, that will be coming after I do my uh, series on socionics. Uh, I'll be doing some oh. deep dive into socionics, criticizing some things while saying this is actually good, pay attention to this. And uh, part of that is uh, the relationships, not the compatibilities, but the relationships and the relational archetypes pointed out by socionics. That is like exquisite information, right? And we're going to be talking about that and how people learn from each other while also giving cognitive functional analysis simultaneously. So look forward to that. 
That's probably going to be season 24. I, I think we have that earmark for 24, 25, but that is definitely something in the future we're going to be discussing uh, for sure. So, yes. All right. Next question. It was mentioned that most people develop their shadow during their childhood and start to develop the sun, the subconscious to avert having a midlife crisis. If this is the case. How does someone find a balance between the development of the unconscious and the subconscious? Also, are there cases where there can be a conflict between the two? Okay, yes, there can be a conflict between the two, but it's very rare and typically doesn't happen. So, uh, for example, when you're developing uh, the unconscious versus the subconscious, uh, now, like most people in first world society, they're very shadow focused, right? People in third world society are more subconscious focused. And as you get towards midlife, you'll start developing the other one that you're lacking. This is why we see people like Taylor Swift, who is subconscious focused. They're developing, she's developing her shadow later in life because she developed her subconscious first. Or, uh, you know, and then there's people like me who's been very shadow focused and I'm starting to develop my subconscious now, basically. Now, mm -hmm. that's very human nurtural, and human nurture plays a part in that, but it's, like, very different. All, uh, it, it, just, it just really depends. Um, so we're going to be talking more about this in Season 17, uh, which is around the corner after we get to the three episodes of Season 16 done. We're going to be do doing diving into this for Season 17 for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, next question. I've heard from teachers that there are different learning styles that different people can have e.g. visual learner, auditory learner, kinesthetic learner, and those who learn by writing things down. How do these apply to type and what functions correlate to which type of learning style? So, uh, so extroverted thinking um, would be like writing things down. Uh, people who are kinesthetic or those are NISE users, um, you know, visual mm -hmm. learners. Uh, is more of an SI and E user, but also depends on what their TE is. It, it, it's just basically cognitive function stacks based on combinations, like what combinations you actually have. So really the learning styles are actually broken up in terms of quadra. So it's whatever quadra uh -huh. you have actually uh, is what actually says, okay, this is your primary learning style, et cetera. And we're gonna be talking about uh, quadra based learning styles uh, also in season 17. Okay. Next question. Can you make a Twitch channel so I can use my Twitch Prime subscription on you? <laughs> yes. Uh, that is coming. Uh, we're going to be rolling out simulcast for live stream where we will be live streamed on multiple, uh, multiple areas and places on the internet simultaneously and not just YouTube. We're going mm -hmm. to be like literally everywhere. So, Like literally. Um, next question from a TI hero perspective in the movie, the matrix, when Morpheus says the matrix is a prison for your mind. Do you see that as having meaning for how TI hero can address TE nemesis? I hope I got that right. Thanks. TI hero. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be, it, it you could also make the argument for the other way around TE hero versus uh, TI nemesis. You could actually, you could make that same argument basically. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's more of like, remember, remember we just did a uh, season 16 episode five, where we talk about how you want to make your nemesis, like, uh, the ally, the ally of, um, of your hero function essentially. And when you're doing that, it's not necessarily being in prison, but you know, if the nemesis is opposing the hero, if it's in opposition to it, uh, by being like a villain, basically, when it is the villain in opposition of hero, it it can it can create a prison for your hero, essentially, uh, or uh -huh. or vice versa, or your your hero can actually absolutely annihilate or dominate your your uh, your villain in such a way where that side of your mind doesn't even have a say, and then eventually that's going to lead to your demon coming out one day to basically break free or, or set things straight, et cetera, as a result of that uh, huge amount of repression um, and whatnot. But definitely not uh, something I would recommend for sure. 
uh, again, okay. just season 16, episode five, try to figure out what you need to do to get your nemesis function and your hero function working together and dealing with external forces instead of like being against each other and eating each other's throats with internal forces, essentially. And that's what I would uh, recommend. Okay. Um, uh, next question is... Hi, INFP here. You said that NP are the best at multitasking, but I always think I suck at multitasking. For example, my ISFJ ex could have a nice phone chat with me while he's intensely playing shotgun video games, which I can never do. ISFP ex boss even said in my appraisal that I have to develop multitasking skills, although she constantly made wrong but real quick decisions because I think she usually forgot the details that may change the game, which seldom happens to me. Is it that any of my functions are not mature enough or we have different definitions of multitasking? Thanks. Yeah, it, it could also be that this person may not actually be an INFP. Um, but, right. uh, but yeah, the definition of multitasking, sure. I mean, what does multitasking look at look like for me? I could be, and I'm trying really hard to not do this recently because my attention span just is, has been terrible recently, like absolutely terrible because I've just been so exhausted. Like you can't really tell right now, but like my eye is twitching right now because I'm like exhausted. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, like if you pay attention really hard, you might be able to see it. Uh, but uh, be that as it may. Um, so yeah, the definition of multitasking may be different. So how I define multitasking is like, well, what am I doing? So I could be, you know, in a meeting on Discord talking to the mod team while simultaneously texting somebody while looking at my email, you know, for, for uh, whatever reason, right? Uh, answering emails and doing YouTube comments basically all at the same time. And I'm just able to keep track of it for some way and then to get through all of them at the same time instead of just focusing on one thing at a time. If I do focus on one thing at a time, I either have to completely devote everything to just that one thing. Otherwise, it's not going to get done. Like, it's just not going uh -huh. to. Or I have to do multiple things in tandem to get there. It's either one or the other, basically. Uh -huh. So uh, that's just kind of like the different direction that it goes. Um, now, INFPs, you have to train yourself to be able to get into the multitasking mode. Uh, why is that? Because your interaction style is more control right? You're more focused on the outcome instead of the process. And this is why ENPs like ENTPs and ENFPs are much more successful at multitasking because they're very process focused because their movement, they're all about improving their process. Whereas someone whose control is more focused on the outcome, like what's the result going to be. So you don't necessarily want to concern yourself with the final result as much as an INFP, which is also like super mega hard because they're idealists and they're trying to be perfect, try to being the ideal with everything that they're doing, right? So that can actually be an issue. That can be a serious issue for them. So uh, based on that, you have to develop the self-discipline. Uh, you know, to not necessarily focus on that one thing at a time per se, but really just, you know, treat it like, um, a, treat it like triage. It's literally triage, you know, oh, there's this critical patient over here. I'm going to go this, oh, this one is, you know, he's not critical yet, but we're going to go handle this one. Oh, that, that woman over there is, uh, oh, she's turning critical. Go over there, you know, save her life, come back, you know, and that's basically how I would define multitasking is like a triage system. So as an INFP, try to understand what your priorities are. Train yourself to approach tasks from a triage point of view and knowing that you feel good about yourself, not necessarily by completing a task, but by gaining progress on the task, which is really super hard for them because they're control types because they're very outcome, very results focused because they're control instead of movement where it's like progress and process is everything to them. And so that's why it seems a little bit more difficult for INFPs in that situation to potentially uh, lose out on, uh, on, you know, being able to multitask. INTPs, however, I've seen INTPs multitask like crazy. So they definitely can, ENTPs can, uh, ENFPs can. Uh, so yeah, develop your SI child, self-discipline, get your TE inferior to be able to have multiple streams of thinking simultaneously. 
I would recommend reading up on some techniques. But uh, once you have like a process for yourself or you actually create a routine specifically for multitasking, you will gain the ability to multitask. It's just something you have to to like find that groove or find that rut to get stuck in as an SI user, that rut that is multitasking and you'll definitely get what you're looking for. All right, next question um, Hold on. was asked by we Leslie. Have... It was a super chat. It oh was yeah, a super chat. You got it, it off the screen. Okay, so I've I've saved it into a notepad. Okay, um, and she asks, "What do you say to an INTP that has no problem with motivation, but is completely convinced the monetary system is the downfall of humanity?" Oh, buy yeah. gold, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> buy gold. Uh, invent your own cryptocurrency in, in protest yeah. of, uh, of the Federal Reserve, I guess. I, uh, <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah, exactly. If you don't like motivation, then why don't you make your own currency? Yeah, like, seriously, make your own currency. Try to change the system. You know, be a part of the solution and not part of the problem is what I would recommend to an INTP. Uh you shouldn't get discouraged because, you know, the norm is something that triggers you to no end. Like the norm often triggers me to no end. And I find myself being forced to participate in things that I don't want to do. And just like I said in last night's lecture, season 13, episode 11, don't get caught up by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Innovate, create something, use the pain in your life to actually create something to solve the problem. That's that's literally okay. what what you got to do as an INTP. Also, uh, the next super chat was uh, Perry Annie saying, "Paying you to take care of that SI inferior and get some rest. Don't burn out." And no, that was a five dollar super chat. Much and then the next thank one, you. and the next one is from Cured Catering. Hey, thanks for last week. So now my girlfriend wants to know, as an ENTP woman, how to keep and make an INTJ male happy. Thanks for all you guys do. So, so how to make an INTJ male happy as an ENTP? Very, very good question. So basically, you let him have freedom of choice at all times. Give him choices. You want to make sure that he's able to have a choice in literally everything uh, because he's only going to do what he wants. And so just let him do what he wants at all times, basically. And usually he's not going to want to do the wrong thing. And if he does, you can call him out on it. And then all of a sudden right. he won't be wanting to do the wrong thing anymore because they realize that it's not something he wants to do because you're going to call him out right. on it, right? Uh, he'll ask you what you think. Tell him exactly what you think without holding back. Just tell him the truth. Like, don't uh, don't uh, temper your edge. Be as edgy as possible and be willing to stab him if you need to, uh, verbally or <laughs> otherwise. You know, not 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 like with an actual knife, please. But uh, but yeah, like like hold him accountable. Tell the truth because it's a breath of fresh air to the INTJ. The INTJ appreciates the harshness and the edginess. It just tell it to me straight approach that an ENTP would have. It's all about tell it to me straight, right? So that's kind of, you know, from that approach. Also seek to like take care of him, like make him feel good, cook him something, you know, do your duty uh, around, find out what duties are, find out what duties he would want you to have and commit yourself to doing those duties. If he needs you to dust in the house, then dust or dust his place or whatever. Fine. You know, if he needs you to do the dishes, volunteer to do dishes, just do what you should for his sake. Right. And, uh, you know, make sure it's not a covert contract. Make sure that you guys understand, you know, what the roles are in your relationship. That way you understand specifically. And then when he shows you things, let him actually show things to you. Let him actually, you know, tell you jokes, uh, allow him uh, to give you a good experience and react positively to him giving you a good experience. Tell him that he makes you the most comfortable because ENTPs are all about being comfortable and he'll have constant performance anxiety, which will come out in the bedroom negatively if you don't tell him that you're comfortable with him. So if you want to have a good experience constantly with him, you have to keep reaffirming to him and encouraging him that he makes you feel comfortable at all times. And you appreciate mm -hmm. all of the things that he gives you, shows you, and does for you because he actually legitimately wants to do it, right? Versus someone right. who feels like they should do it. It's what they want, right? Because right. And, and you as an ENTP get what you've always wanted, which is, you know, to be wanted because that's all ENTPs want is to be wanted. They want people to actually desire and want 
to spend time with them and want to be around them, right? And, uh, you know, and not necessarily people who are going to behave dutifully around them, et cetera. So I, I think that answers that question. You want to add to that, Jab? Um, how to make how to make an INTJ male? Oh, happy. be loyal to them. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Like a big one. <laughs> yeah, be loyal. Um, I think based on what you're saying, thanks for last week. I'm assuming we answered the question to you last week, and that was basically built around the stuff relating to um the stagnancy and you know, making sure they keep you on point and they hold you accountable. So the female holds the male INTJ accountable so that he doesn't slip into stagnancy and become uh, stagnant in his growth such that he's less than a, he's less than his partner such that she's looking down on him. Because in a relationship where one person is looking too far down on another person, you are going to have problems. Yes. I mean, I think yes. that's just human nature. Like, definitely. definitely. If you think someone's beneath you, you're not going to want to be in a relationship with them. So, yeah. I mean, maybe your history can help overcome that, but like, do you really want to be with someone in 30 years that you're looking down on? It's probably not healthy. So, keep no. your partner, uh, hold your partner accountable hold him to high standards and make sure that he's being the best INTJ he can possibly be. And in, at the same time, you know, be the best woman you can be at the same time so that you can rise up together and become this amazing power couple, you know, a beacon of light upon the landscape, you know, yeah. the lighthouse of uh, wisdom. Yeah. And to, and to add to that, if you haven't watched the, the playlist on the YouTube channel or listened to it on the podcast season four, how do intimate relationships act? How intimate relationships actually work? You might want to watch or listen to that. Uh, also, there's season six, four pillars of self intimacy, which you kind of need to figure out just to like be a person. And then uh, season thirteen as well, which talks about masculine and feminine, uh, like the roles, etc. What what those what the sacred genders actually mean. Uh, but yeah, season four, definitely understand that process of love and respect. Um, very controversial topic here on the YouTube channel, but, uh, definitely a standard with which you can actually hold your partner accountable with for sure. Okay. So there's actually a follow-up question here and it's something I was thinking, but I thought, eh, sure. Let's and go the follow-up question was from Heather Bryant. And she says, what if you actually don't feel comfortable around the INTJ, how to mitigate SE inferior without lying? You, now, you tell him the truth to his face and you tell him, you're not making me comfortable right now because of X, Y, Z. Like, straight right. up. And then he's going to want to not do that. At the same time, if you, like, F.E. guilting and you like you don't want to make him feel bad, what you could do is say, instead of telling him what you don't like, maybe you could tell him what you do like. Because, I mean, he's got that en any nemesis. He's worried about, you know, other people's intentions. So... Instead of telling him what you don't like, maybe you could tell him what you do like and perhaps what you do like flies in contrast to what he's already doing. So by by process of him doing what you want, he's no longer doing those things that make you uncomfortable. And realistically, uh, an INTJ with SE inferior is going to be insecure about making you uncomfortable. So he's probably going to see it. Yep. But he if he doesn't, if he's like in some degree of depravity and is blind to his SE inferior, or maybe he's like in a rut and he's not giving a shit. Maybe he's the impotent lover, according to season 13 episode. Right. <laughs> if he's that, um, you, you have your two methods. You either tell, you, you be direct with him and tell him as being a piece of shit. Or if you want to try the softer approach first, you could say, I want you to do this. Like, Exactly. And what you want him to do is in the face of, so if you tell him what you want to do and he does what you want to do, that needs to be something where he can't simultaneously do something he doesn't like that you don't like that makes you uncomfortable. So, um, yep. uh, I don't like you brushing, uh, instead of saying, I don't like you brushing your hair that way. Why don't you say, I want you to brush your hair this way. Yep. I mean, uh okay uh let's go to the ne next question oh sure. wait there was a two dollar super chat without any message uh thank you sarah robin for the two dollars um, yes thank you thank you very coin much. operated here Jab is uh, coin operated tonight yes 
I mean, that, that's a lot funnier in Australia because we actually do have two dollar coins, but whatever. Oh yeah, uh, gotta uh, have those loonies and their toonies. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's go on to the next question. The Canadians and... down under. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> eh, not really. Australia is basically America down under. And New Zealand is kind of like down under Canada. Oh, I, uh, I had no idea. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, next question. Hi, Chase. I have an ISTP mum who constantly abuses my ISFP sisters and my child functions. She also triggers my ISFP sisters if I hear her a lot by making super insensi insensitive jokes. Now my sister hates my mum. What can I do to improve the situation? I tried telling her directly, but she snapped and said no one was supporting her. Okay, so one of my very close friends uh, is an INFP, and he has an ISTP dad, and uh, they're all like introverted perceiving types as children, and they all have the same struggle with an ISTP father uh, in that situation. And basically, they're asking me, like, hey, what do I do? What do I do? And I'm like, yeah, uh, get away from your father as soon as possible. Like, seriously, uh, get away. Uh, get get a job, move out, um, be away from your family so that you can be who you are. And then as a result of you being on your own and demonstrating and proving to your family that you can be out on your own, then at that point, uh, they will respect you. And uh, then the relationship will get a little bit better. You're developing your mm -hmm. subconscious, you're developing your shadow uh, and maturing, uh, which allows you to cognitive uh, transition uh, when you're near uh, that parent that's causing problems. Very important. If you're not able to get a job because maybe you're like underage or something like that, then get involved in extracurricular activities as much as possible just so that you don't have to like actually be at home. So that's what I would recommend in that situation. Right. Uh, right. For to sure. Put, to put it simple, control your environment. Yeah. It, um, be, because, I mean, yeah. at that point, you're at risk of being stuck in your shadow in a very negative way like I was when I was growing up. So, All right. Um, next question is, can social engineering cause damage through cognitive dissonance? As ENTPs, we don't seem to have that issue because the lack of sincerity, but I can see other types potentially stressing themselves out, emulating types of social engineer. Is there a solution to this? Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. I had an INFP tell me today that uh, she wasn't fake at, at all. And um, I, I'll be honest, I was kind of taken aback by that because I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, uh, and but they're like, well, it's so stressful for me to be aware of what other people want and then adjust myself based on what other people want. And I'm like, but you do it all the time anyway. You, you naturally do it. You just have to like be okay with doing it. Don't feel bad about it. It's, it's, it's natural. Remember, all manipulation is not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's a neutral thing, right? There is no good or bad attached it. to it. It's how you use it at the end of the day. Um, you know, it's like where people are talking about like white lies is, is what is a white lie really a bad thing, right? Is embellishment really a bad thing? It was another ENTP arguing with me about embellishment on the channel today and in, in the YouTube comments, um, for example. I mean, definitionally speaking, lying is lying. But at, but at the end of the day, it's like, well, what's the point? What are we trying to do here? You know, is it is it is are we having a positive outcome in the relationship? Or are we having a negative one? And I'm not telling you folks to like go out and lie to people. I'm telling you like be wise. Like seriously, be wise. You know, be as harmless as doves, but as wise as serpents. Literally, be wise. I mean, that's that is the actual standard of human behavior, right there. Uh, so, you know, just remember that it's it's yeah sometimes types, certain types have more difficulties emulating other types, but uh, in reality, uh, all types technically can if they just, if they're, if they're well studied in the science and, and capable, they really can. But here's the other thing. A lot of times don't even have to, they don't even have to. Why? Well, think about it. The sensors are 70% of the population. You don't really see them having to emulate very much because the world is already structured around them anyway, because they're the majority. So it, it's, it doesn't really bother them that much. They don't necessarily have to do it because people just like them are all over the place. It's the intuitives right. that have that burden, right? And because of that burden, that can be that can be a problem and and go on, you know, further with that. So just just something to be aware of. Okay. Um, 
Okay, next question. I would last like to ask your... Oh, sorry. Wrong question. How do I solve a problem with my ESTJ coworker, female? We share a working space, and she wants it a certain way, tidiness, which is less efficient than how it was before. Therefore, I don't want to comply, and I feel limited, not free, as an ESTP, female, to perform my work in the best way possible and to move most efficiently in the space. How do I confront or not confront her? So an ESTP, ESTJ, female co-workers, both female. ESTP, ESTJ, female co-workers, and they're at odds with each other? They are at odds with each other. One wants tidiness in the workplace. One wants chaos. The one who wants chaos thinks the chaos is more efficient because the creating the tidiness requires too much energy. That's the general gist. Well, I mean, if we're assuming that they're properly typing each other, okay, well, let's assume that. Uh, actually, ESTPs kind of like things clean sometimes because it means they have better efficiency of movement. They're able to get things done more often, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of, uh, you know, the direction I would take it. Um, well, well, independent of type, how would you uh, tackle this obvious movement control conflict? ESTP is our control. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. So from so what I'm reading from this, right, but I'm thinking there's a mistype there because this problem sounds like a control movement sounds conflict. Like, yeah, exactly. It sounds like an ESTJ, ENTP situation. <laughs> and the, uh -huh. uh, the ENTP is like, you can't control me. I can just do whatever I want. And the ESTJ is like, well, my comfort is more important than yours. And then the ENTP is like, no, well, my comfort is more important than yours. I have my right for my desk to make to be comfortable, et cetera. And then the ESTJ is like, well, I, I need my comfort too, you know, so mine's more important than yours because I'm more sensitive than yours or whatever. And it just turns into this mm -hmm. big thing, which in reality, it's like, okay, that's not, I mean, they're, they are, they need to be, they need to agree to disagree and be responsible for their own space, basically, instead of, you know, make it the other person's problem. That would be nice. That, that, that would be very nice if, uh, if people would, uh, would do that, you know, so kind of, uh, what I would recommend in that situation. But, uh, you know, it, back to ESTJ, ESTP, you know, as long as the ESTJ is not inhibiting the freedom of choice on the part of the ESTP, it should be fine. Uh, because then the ESTP would definitely seek to make the ESTJ comfortable. If they're not, then the ESTJ can call out the ESTP and say, hey, you're not making me comfortable right now. Please help, etc." So that's kind of uh, a way that I would go about doing it. So. Okay. Um, we got a super chat question from Leslie Miller. All currency is made from debt. It is slavery. I don't desire to join any cycle of withholding technology and destroying the planet. What else to do? Um, what you could do is uh, follow in the footsteps of Nikola Tesla and uh, make power free. And then we c and then me and Chase, when we start our electric car company, we'll name our car after you. We'll call it the Miller. <laughs> the Miller. <laughs> nice. Uh, but cars are uh, are are female, right? So it would be the Leslie, right? Um, anyway, uh, so all currency is made from debt. I mean, if we're talking about leveraging from uh, the point of view of banks, okay, sure, fair enough. Uh, debt is definitely slavery. This is why I tell young people to not go to college. Yes, that's right. I'm literally telling young people don't go to college, don't go to university, if you're I mean, not getting like a full ride, or you know, because debt. Student loan debt is, I mean, I'm I mean, sorry, it's, it's, it's unwise. Don't do it. I've got some anecdotal evidence on my part. I mean, look at me. i got a master's degree in chemical engineering and the job market so dead I could barely find a job. So I basically spent five years of my life to get a degree in a field where there's no jobs. And on that note, I have friends from high school who dropped out in uh, the 10th grade who are now earning six figures doing uh, tradey jobs like plumbing or laying bricks. I mean, I don't know if that's an Australia specific phenomena, but well, I, I mean, mean, if you think about it, six figures as a laborer is insane. Well, it, it's it's going to end up being at that point because until we have artificial intelligence where we have robots to be able to handle a lot of the menial tasks, uh, basically humor, human uh, interfacing jobs are going to become super mega valuable. Uh, builders, right. uh, you know, those types of things, they're going to be insanely valuable. 
valuable, like mm -hmm. like like even uh, masseuses, right, or um, anything that has mm -hmm. to do with the hands. You know, SPs and their types of jobs are going to be insanely valuable uh, when we get into the nano age, because a lot of people are just not going to have the skill sets anymore, right? And their skill sets are going to be in, it, really important. And all of a sudden, apprenticeships are going to be the most important thing, right? I, I'm sorry that the the old paradigm of how things have worked is over. It's right. already completely over. Everything from the 1900s, from the the GI generation all the way up to the Gen Xers, is completely gone. It's it's over. I mean, quite frankly, I, I dare say marriage itself as an institution is over. You know, not that right. that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not making my, that judgment, but I'm just saying, like millennials, Gen Zers, and and so on, they just don't really care that much about the institution of marriage, and that's a fact. You know, sorry, it's just it's just the direction that our race is going right now, and they're going away from it. Uh, so, uh, and and our race is also going away from from these currencies as well. And uh, and it's interesting watching the right. big banks get involved with cryptocurrency, right? And uh, and yeah. but and, and yeah, people withhold technology. Do they do it all the time? They do it either through like patents or trade secrets, or they do it because they're afraid of crashing society around them because if a certain technology was to be released, the entire monetary system would collapse and then there would be mayhem everywhere. At least that's the argument that they make, right? So, um, From my understanding of the field, it's not so much that. It's uh, suppressing technology so as to not kill your sector. So I've heard rumors oh, of yeah, that's true. Safe fossil fuel companies buying up patents relating to renewable technologies and then just like shelving them and not developing them so that they don't invest in their demise, so to speak. Right. Um, but the problem with patents is they're only usually 25 years with the exception of a few um, extensions. So, I mean, in the long run, I mean, it's, a, it's for the most part a short-term problem, but in the span of humanity... I don't think we should be so negative towards it. All right. Yeah, we got definitely. another super chat question from Perry Annie. And he said, do you think the four sides of the mind? Oh, do you think the four sides of the mind and how they conflict is how our true self innately ensures growth? Because without the growing cognitive system, entropy would take over and the self would stagnate. Yes, absolutely. The answer is yes. Growth through conflict, growth through suffering, growth through pain, uh, growth through confliction, being conflicted, self-confliction. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the four sides of the mind definitely do start off in conflict, um, but as you learn to develop them and uh, master them, not necessarily control them, but more about mastering them instead of them mastering you, or at least them mastering their corner of your mind their corner of your soul basically and having dominance over that area then you're actually able to you know become something more the like an integrated human being uh you know is able to access all four sides of their mind instead of just having them bleed out here and there and you know for whichever situation that's like i guess i mean i don't even want to say uber mensch but i mean it's pretty it's pretty dope right so uh but yeah, the the self the self would stagnate, and it is very interesting that Periani and and I know Periani as uh you know he's a very concrete individual, and for him to be talking about these abstract concepts like that, it, it's really dope. It just really goes to show that his subconscious is actually pretty well developed, uh, which I find fantastic. Uh, but uh, you know the concept of entropy itself actually taking place within the human soul and potentially causing stagnation and ultimately death of the human soul itself is is exquisite. And you know, whereas we have like basically something similar to magnetic polarity, you know, existing, uh, you know, the same things that holds atoms together is the same things that are literally holding our mind together. Right. right. And, and keeping the four sides of the mind, you know, either at bay while simultaneously keep them in conflict for the sake of growth, and, you know, ultimately leading to wisdom and acquisition of wisdom. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I think that covers the question. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add or should I go to the next one? Let's, let's do the next one. Thank you, Periani. Yeah. Thank you, Periani. Um, let's see. So, oh, okay. Now this is a question I accidentally missed, but I just realized. 
So this says dogs and cats, but I think we can just generalize that as animals. So do animals have personality types? Yes. Um, yes, they do. So you can actually type animals? Yes. Well, I, I'm i not very good at it, uh, but my mentor, my, men my INFJ mentor is really good at it. Yes. And he did it very well. And I, when he first pitched it to me, I was like, there's no way, man. That's not that there's no way that's even real. No. Uh -huh. And then, and he's got like, I don't know. He had like six dogs, six dogs at his house. And they'd all come in and be like, Oh, that's the ISFJ. Look at it. Just, you know, it's all about social justice. Definitely all that social justice dog, the cop, the cop of the house. There's the cop uh -huh. guys, <laughs> you know? And then they had this uh, Alaskan Wolf Husky, which is very ENTP ish. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's true. It's so true. All right, uh, right. Dogs have personalities too. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, but how do you type that? And, uh, and uh, basically, uh, he had this interesting, uh, you know, looser model of the interaction style specific to uh, specific to dogs. And it was, it was amazing. I, I don't know very much about that. That's why I don't comment on it very much. Uh, you know, maybe mm -hmm. one day uh, when he's willing to share uh, that with me, or if I make some discoveries on my own, we'll definitely develop that out. But uh, he definitely he went into that direction with animals, and uh, it was it was exquisite and very well thought out and really well done. I I was impressed. Uh -huh. um, right. Uh, since then, though, if I tried to type dogs, I I've tried and I've consistently failed. I just, I haven't been around them, uh, long enough. I mean, I had two German shepherds up until recently and then they, <gasps> they were killed. Um, but, um, what? yeah, there's some drama with, um, uh, people that live nearby who, uh, liked poisoning certain animals and we handled that. But, uh, yeah, it was very sad. Um, my son wow. still talks about that, but anyway, uh, it uh, it was something that was just un unreal uh, to me at the time, but it, it was absolutely real after seeing it into practice. And I was very resistant for a while, but yes, absolutely. The answer is yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly ask one from the chat. How, as an INTP, do you fall in love with the process? Motivation is hard because after conceptualizing it, it, the actual work to build it, is monotonous. So it, the actual work to build it, is monotonous. Well, if you are having difficulty with the monotony, then I suggest you enlist help or at least assign the monotonous menial task to other people while you get focused on the bigger <laughs> stuff. Use that right. ENTJ shadow and delegate accordingly. Like, seriously. That's what I would recommend <laughs> you do. Right. Or spend time thinking about how to make whatever system you're designing or building more efficient so that there's actually less menial tasks. If there's more menial tasks, there's potential more points of failure within your system, which may indicate a potential flaw within your logic. So you may have to go back uh -huh. to the root of the situation and redesign multiple different ways just to test to see if you're actually wrong. But then you may end up making additional discoveries in your design and making something stronger. Um, but yeah, uh, nothing wrong with asking for help uh, or delegating to other people if you have to. That's literally what Elon Musk as an INTP had to do when he you know, created you know, PayPal and Tesla and SpaceX, et cetera. Right. Do uh, you want to go to the next question? Let's yes. do it. Um, I'd like to ask your view between behavior and cognition. I think that our behavior changes a lot. Like cognition is something like a blueprint. Our behavior can change and we can behave like an INFP is TJ due to some internal and external influences. But I think the way you think and you process information is something constant unless you st study cognitive behavior therapy. I still cannot understand cognition. Do you think cognition can change? So this sounds like a nature nurture question. Yeah, it does sound like a nature nurture question. Uh, Yes, your nurture can change. Your nature can change up to a point, and then your nature can't change after that. It's usually adolescence is what the, the changes are, or there could be some serious trauma or head injury that could cause your nature to change after the fact, or even sometimes PTSD in very rare cases uh, can also change your nature as well. Uh, but 
PTSD is also like, you know, low levels of PTSD or just PTSD in general is also kind of how people develop their shadow as well, to be fair. Uh, so it, it, it all depends. It really depends. But it, yes, it's it's very nurtural uh, based on that. Um, behavior uh, can change if you're going to do a cognitive transition. So I, I recommend uh, watching in season one the episode on the eight cognitive spectra while simultaneously watching the episode on uh, the uh, cognitive transitions in season one, and uh, and then also watching uh, season 17 when it because it, it is coming out very soon, and you'll be able to get uh, some of the answers to those questions. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Let us see, the next question. Do you know of any useful books probably written by NTJs? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Lean Startup by Eric Reese is probably the most important NTJ book I've ever read. Lean Startup. Lean nice. Startup for entrepreneurs. Absolutely exquisite. It talks about the concept of the uh, uh, minimum of viable product um, for sure. Um, how does one gain access to their unconscious in a healthy way if the way to access the unconscious is through pain? I ran out of breath there. Say again. How can one gain access to their unconscious in a healthy way if the way to access the unconscious is through pain? Uh, the way to access your unconscious is through worry or, or not being worried. Basically the opposite of that, turning your nemesis function into your ally, uh, with right. your hero to ally the hero to handle an external issue of some kind or threat or obstacle. That would be the best way, uh, to develop your shadow and use your shadow in a positive way instead of like a negative way. Uh, that's how I would uh, go about saying it for sure. Uh, um, Let's go to the next question. And we have, how do the classic temperaments, caloric, sanguinic, melancholic, sanguine, phlegmatic. Yeah, sorry, these are, I, I only speak English, uh, phlegmatic, connect with the 16 types. Uh, the classic temperaments, I would imagine that they attach to the, I mean, I would assume our temperaments are the classic temperaments. <laughs> like, right. because Plato and Hippocrates and all those guys talked about them. You know what I mean? Like, I, how uh -huh. classic are those temperaments, right? Like, how classic is that? I, I don't know. I don't know per se. I mean... Let me, let me, um, uh, yeah, choleric, man, choleric. Four temperament theory. Um, yeah, Kiersey used them to help drive his temperaments according to Periani. So I'm immediately going to assume that they've lost all credibility in your eyes. <laughs> no, well, I mean, sure. I mean, they may just be like exactly the same as what we use. It looks like they are exactly the same as what we use, just a different label. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically what it seems like at this point. So, oh, and they also have elements attached to them. That's cool. I'll I'll check that out. But uh, from based on what I'm reading so far, it seems like they're directly you know mappable to the uh, temperaments that we are using based off of Linda Barons and Stephen Montgomery. Right. Um. So Sarah okay, Robbins uh, got a question. Exactly. Uh, ISFP here. I have had a hard time pursuing romance. Trusting isn't my strength. I feel constantly underappreciated when pursuing. I've avoided dating for a year because of this. Tips on what personality compliments to look for. Tips on what personality components so, to look no, for. No, compliments. So I think what she's saying is which personality types complement her personality type in a relationship. So ISFPs should definitely look for SFJs. So ISFJs, SFJ, uh, ESFJs. So uh, Sarah, you'd want somebody who is loyal to you, um, constantly trying to make you feel good about yourself, very dutiful towards you, uh, very caring towards you, 
but always willing to think things through and tell you exactly what they think, but they also think highly of you at the same time. And they are very focused on giving you what you want because you will have full freedom around these people no matter what. They'll give you full freedom to do whatever you want. And uh, they seek to make your mood good at all times. Uh, they think highly of you. Um, they, uh, you know, and you're able to make them comfortable, give them a good experience, etc. cetera. Uh, there's, there's so many more ways to go about doing that. Um, spotting them, they're like, they're very um, sensible and regular people. And they appreciate how sensual you are as an SP, uh, as an artisan, and they love your sensuality and their sensuality is like unlocking this hidden world to them because of how sensual you are. And they like to be sensual with you and have that shared experience basically. And uh, they want to become this canvas with which you paint upon and how you give them uh, good sensation and good, good experiences uh, and shared experiences over and over and over again indefinitely. They also remember every good thing that uh, you've ever done for them, like forever. And so that when you mess up, they always remember all the good things that you've ever done for them and like a few mess ups here and there. And they're not uh, whimsical, uh, like potentially you might be because ISFPs could be very whimsical, uh, but uh, they are not whimsical. And be, be based on that, you can have a relationship with these people and it's like having a foundation uh, that you can stand on and they're not going to waver even when you mess up, even when you screw up, or maybe even when you're potentially being overly selfish if you are an ISFP, because FI heroes are at risk of being overly selfish, uh, which can be a potential problem. Um, they're also at risk of jumping to conclusions uh, because they need to spend time verifying their beliefs, which they have a hard time doing. But luckily, the SFJs out there are very good at verifying beliefs and uh, will be constantly verifying your beliefs all the time, regardless of how you feel about them. But it's for your sake and it's to build you up and make you into a better person and more effective and freer because they don't want you to be trapped by dogma, which is kind of funny because SFJs sometimes do get trapped by dogma. But that's usually because they're doing it from a situation that's inhibiting freedom. And when you're trying to break out of their dogma for the sake of your freedom, they'll actually follow your lead. Uh, so you actually have protections on both sides uh, to watch watch out for each other and each other's backs as a result. Uh, so uh, an interesting recommendation that I would make uh, to you, uh, Sarah, on how to find SFJs. Um, SFJs are usually in government centers. They usually get government-related jobs, uh, also military. Uh, military is very SFJ-oriented. Uh, uh, martial artists are also uh, SFJs, uh, typically, uh, by and large. Uh, SFJs, uh, dominated by SFJs. Um, and uh, you can also use an app called Shaper. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, Shaper is kind of like this entrepreneurial-esque app where you're like doing skill matches with other people in your community. And you might be able to match some of your skills and some of your interests with people. It's not necessarily a dating app. It's actually an app to do collaborations for work and projects and uh, entrepreneurship, et cetera. But get involved and see what comes up. And then maybe you might be able to develop a relationship with somebody as a result of having those shared interests, et cetera. Also, meetup.com would be another place I'd recommend uh, SFJs, uh, especially SFJ men. Um, if they're not already in the gym, usually they are, uh, and they spend a lot of time there. I'd recommend uh, you know going to the gym as well and participating there. Uh, and because you have you know ISFP uh, NI child, it's not necessarily a bad thing for you to be the one to initiate with uh, with with these SFJs when you identify them, uh, because it shows them that you want them, and that's all they ever want. They want to be wanted. Basically, it's very important to them. And if you focus on giving them a good experience as a result, they'll be drawn to you because you're literally etching their soul in a positive way, in a way that they like to be etched. So they want to be around you. So you etch them more because you're basically the canvas, or they are basically the canvas that you are painting on with your SE paintbrush, basically. So uh, that's basically what you would want to look for. Seriously, look into SFJs uh, as much as possible and kind of uh, realize that like your ideal man would be more of an SJ approach and just kind of go in that direction. And uh, I think you'll definitely find what you're looking for. And they're extremely loyal as well. Uh, very, very loyal. And uh, definitely um, because of that loyalty, uh, they are someone who is reliable and someone who can uh, depend that you can depend on, especially when things get rough. And that is very important, uh, you know, at least from your point of view, um, if you really are an ISFP. 
So that's how I would answer that question. Nice. Um, let's see what we got here. Let's go with this one. Uh, you mentioned that you knew an SI user who had a constant sleep schedule. Sorry, an SI demon user who had a constant sleep schedule. How did they do that? From reading about the successes of others, a lot claim self-discipline is absolutely a necessity. I well, really want that self-discipline. Is NI hero enough to acquire self-discipline despite SI demon? Another hurdle that might be a problem to acquire such self-discipline is the fact that I am a finisher, have a hard time starting works, uh, starting to get ready to sleep, and even starting to eat. How do finishers get over these daily starting hurdles? Willpower? So basically, um, basically how I would do that is, is that if you are SE inferior and you have SI demon because you have SE inferior, then you would want to basically not, if you're alone, if you're alone in your home, it's different, right? But if you're not alone, your sleep schedule should somewhat match the other people in the home and utilize them. Like when they're going to bed, you should probably go to bed because you're at risk of making them uncomfortable if you're still noisy and up at night, et cetera, and they're mm -hmm. not able to sleep. So you definitely want to like match your body clock with somebody else's. And that really helps you gauge, you know, a, a proper sleeping schedule as a result. If you're alone, that's where it can get really, really difficult. Uh, and in that case, uh, you really want to get other people that you know that you're close to to just hold you accountable. And it, it really becomes an accountability thing. And uh, to the point where like you are making a, a commitment, maybe a professional commitment to somebody uh, in some case, maybe to a therapist or hopefully to a family member. And you just don't want to let that person down if you have SI demon. And uh, because you're not wanting to let them down, that'd be an issue. Uh, another thing you could do is uh, go to the gym at five in the morning, knowing that you have to go to the gym and actually perform physically uh, will force you to go to bed at the proper time because you know that you want a positive outcome. You're spending all this time and money and effort on it. So uh, because you have that uh, constraint then, and that's what you actually want to do, then you're definitely going to seek to uh, make sure that you're getting proper rest for that. Uh, constraints like that are very helpful or potentially a job or potentially, you know, other things fill your life with responsibilities that benefit you because you're being responsible. And, uh, and then your sleep schedule will typically adjust specifically as a result of having those responsibilities. It's usually like INTJs or INFJs that are kind of aimless in the world, potentially playing World of Warcraft at all hours instead of actually, you know, having a job or contributing to anything. Those are the INTJs that end up having really screwed up um, INJs that have really screwed up sleep schedules as a result. It's because they're not near somebody else that they're using as a standard or because they don't have enough obligations or commitments to fill their time properly to be responsible human beings to be able to make sure that they're performing well enough at that point. It all comes down to performance. INJs, do you want to perform or not? Okay, well, are you? do you have anything with which you can perform? If not, get things that you, that you can perform at. And then because you want to perform, you're going to make sure that you have enough sleep so that you can perform. That's basically how the strategy I would offer. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I accidentally had my microphone muted there because I was drinking some water and I forgot to unmute it. So excuse the short break. Uh, let's go on to the next question. Oh, yeah. Before we go into the next session, uh, PLDR, what Chase said, develop yourself a routine. All right, now let's go on to the next question. Uh, do, you awesome. think, do you think personality type could dictate pain tolerance? If so, yes. which types do you think would be the most and least tolerant to pain? In other words, which types are the most and least stoic? Uh, so, well, it's, pain it's, is associated with SI, right? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like, so SI hero is the most sensitive, and they they feel pain and they feel all the pain more than anyone else. But because of how sensitive they are, they can actually temper that sensitivity and create discipline, and that means that they can eventually take all of the pain that they possibly can. Right. right. And, you know, so it's, they start out, you know, super mega sensitive, but as they get older, the higher SI users, uh, they actually end up becoming more stoic and more disciplined. Whereas the other way around with SE users, they may start out with not having as much, you know, pain, you know, earlier in life, but later in life, they end up becoming way more sensitive to it as the rest of the size of their mind actually develop. So just be aware that that's a thing. So it's not with this one type, it's the standard here. It's more like, okay, are they starting out 
okay, yeah, they're starting out, then they're going to behave this way. And then later in life, it's going to be this way because they're more integrated. They've developed the other sides of their mind more often. They're more mature. So. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, basically for the most part, SESI, strong SI it can become a bit numb to the pain. So SI child and SI inferiors are ex incredibly vulnerable for the most part. Yes. Um, let's go on to the next question. How would an ISTP INFP romantic relationship work out? Also, how would an ISTP approach entrepreneurship? Um, Hold on. So, Can you ask that again, please, in a different way? Okay, so if I'm an ISTP and I wanted my relationship with an INFP to work out, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, and, and what should I hold my partner accountable for doing? Well, you got you to gotta make sure that she's comfy. You got to make sure she feels good. And uh, you always tell her what your intentions are at all times. Uh, and you tell her that you think highly of her, of course. But also at the same uh -huh. time, you don't want her to stagnate and get too comfortable, which is a huge risk with SI child. You don't want them to get too comfortable, which is pretty nice for SE parent to be able to handle and be able to, to parent their child. The problem is, though, is that it can kind of over parent and become like a helicopter dad in that situation. And then the INFP could end up feeling really disrespected and in that situation. So that can be an issue. So it's, it really comes down to balance and communication. They are very compatible. They could definitely work as a relationship, but you want to have, uh, you want to have like some level of uh, communication on both sides because the ISTP is definitely at risk of overdoing and being potentially overbearing and too controlling. But the INFP could also be way too lazy and focused on their mood and only care about doing what their mood lines up with, which is super frustrating to an ISTP and would cause the ISTP to become ragey as a result. So it really comes down to communication and making sure that there's no covert contracts in the relationship as much as possible. It's super mega important uh, in that uh, situation. Uh, beautiful. Um, how would an ISTP approach entrepreneurship? How would an ISTP approach entrepreneurship by creating things, creating things that actually help other people, uh, creating uh, tools, for example, like a new tool that doesn't exist anymore, that has never existed right. before. Uh, Utilize the NFJ subconscious. Yeah, and mentor people, become a mentor, a skills mentor to help skills, develop skills in other people and uh, take on apprentices, et cetera. That is definitely how I'd recommend an ISTP approach uh, entrepreneurship, like starting a YouTube YouTube channel on how to do proper landscaping, right? Start a YouTube <laughs> channel on how to uh, operate an excavator or use a various tool or pieces of equipment, for example, and have a podcast about it. I, I the sky's the limit there. Uh, read the book Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, which he's an ENFP, and ISTPs very much benefit from ENFP, so you'll definitely understand what they're saying. Read every book uh -huh. ever written by Gary Vaynerchuk and Lean Startup by Eric Reese, and then you're basically good to go at that point. So, Okay, um, next question is, which types are the most likely to be compulsive buyers? Which types are the most likely to be compulsive liars? Um, NPs, all of the NPs. Uh, oy, oy, oy. Yeah, with uh, ENTP and ENFP being the worst. ENTP and ENFP. Oh, okay. So EMPs for the yep. most part. ENPs. Oh, no. Um, if someone is stuck in their unconscious due to trauma and ingests alcohol, for example, which would normally cognitive transition them into their unconscious if they were in their ego, do they transition at all? And if so, what into what side of their mind? Um, whatever the source of the thing that is keeping them in their unconscious to begin with, when that's not, then they'll be typically in their ego. Uh, and, they, uh, and they usually have to go back to their ego first to recharge before they can go into their subconscious. Um, if they have to, if they're around that situation, that's costing them way too much trauma or difficulty. And it's, a, and it's even more alcohol, they could end up even deeper into their superego and transition to their superego, but they're not really going to be transitioning their subconscious from that location. Not really. All right. Um, question from Candace and she asks, which types don't like to talk about their past that much or at all? S I demon. 
Yeah, right? S SI Demon for sure do not like to talk about their past unless they offer it up themselves. If they're the ones initiating on it, then it's fine. But if you start asking the SI Demon uh, about their past without their permission or dig into it, they will freak out and get super ma major ragey and probably door slam you forever and never have anything to do with you ever again. So yeah, don't do right. that. Um, yeah. SI Inferiors also usually don't like it if they are not comfortable with you. And it, it was difficult for me to tell the difference between SI Inferior and SI Demon. That's why I maintained that I was an INTJ for so many years, even though I really wasn't. I was just a shadow focused ENTP and it wasn't until my mentor pointed it out and proved to me to my face and in front of other people that I absolutely was not an INTJ. There's no way that that was even possible uh, That uh, and that I was absolutely an extrovert. Um, and, and he did this in a restaurant uh -huh. uh, when that happened. I'll, I'll never forget it. It's a nice Thai place, actually. I really like Thai food. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it, it, it can get pretty rough. Um, so basically, SI users who have a pessimistic standpoint don't really like talking about their past. Now, that's not to say SI parent. They actually do talk about their past a lot. So it doesn't really apply necessarily. And SI critic... Uh, they can talk about their past as well, uh, but usually they don't want to. They're more interested in what you are doing because they're ISPs, basically. Uh huh. Okay. Um, we had a decent question up there. Let me find it. What are the characteristics of SE Demon? Oh, the characteristics of, of SE Demon. So you know how sarcastic and snarky <laughs> I get all the time and how I just have yeah. the absolute desire to twist the knife with ev everything that I do <laughs> and, and like overdo it and punish people with extreme prejudice with every little thing. Vince Draken, uh -huh. eat your heart out. Um, yeah. It's kind of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of uh, basically... Yeah, that's it. Um I just, I just want to burn everything to the ground and dance over the flaming corpses, basically, because right. reality sucks so bad that I just want to uh, burn it down to the ground. Uh, why? Well, it's because SED Demon sees the physical reality as something not worth uh, existing. It should not be allowed to exist because of how much of a failure it is. It sees reality as a failure. So instead, it wants to bend space-time using metaphysical, using metaphysics and metaphysical power to bring something that does not exist yet into existence in order to make the world better. And when it is prevented mm -hmm. to do so, and it is not given the freedom to do so, then it's like, well, screw it. Then I'm just going to burn everything to the ground. That's basically how SE Demon works. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts on emotional intelligence and how it plays into the types? Uh, emotional intelligence is very subjective because an FI user, they're a sympath, whereas an FE user is an empath and people equate, uh, emotional intelligence to one of the two. So whenever anyone talks about emotional intelligence, especially like Warren Farrell, oh, that book, the boy crisis, I just, I don't know. I, why do I envision me one day debating that guy? I, 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 I really do. Um, He's not wrong with his statistics on, on how he identifies the problems with the mature masculine or the problems with men in general, especially in first world society. He's not wrong there. He is wrong when he talks about forcing boys to undergo emotional intelligence classes at school. I think he's out of his mind. Absolutely out of his <laughs> mind. But uh, yeah, right in the dumpster with that one. And, uh, but yeah, sympathy versus empathy. Are we talking like which emotional intelligence are we talking about? Like which one? Because not everyone is empathic. Not everyone is sympathic. If you're an FI user, you're sympathic. Look at it this way. FI feels shame. FE feels guilt. Okay. Shame. So, so on the positive side, FI is sympathy on the negative side. It's shame. Okay. On right. the positive side for FE, it's empathy on the negative side. It's guilt. All right. So that's that's literally how it goes. So really, then the argument becomes, well, if you're lacking in emotional intelligence, that must mean your F functions are lower. OK, so that would basically mean anyone who's TE hero or TI hero or TI parent or TE parent would it would automatically based on that rubric or that metric be considered lacking in emotional intelligence while simultaneously completely ignoring the fact that, you know, uh, INTJs have FI child, right? Or, um, 
You know, it, it's just, it's so dumb. That's why uh, you can't really, you can't, it's not qualifiable. It's not quantifiable with emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the stupid label that we use to describe this like so-called problem. When in reality, it is it, it, reality. The actual problem is a lack of maturity actually, especially the lack of the mature masculine, but it's really a lack of maturity. That's the actual problem. It's not actually a, a lacking in emotional intelligence, really. Right. So maybe we should like fix the problem there instead. That'd be nice. So, okay. Justin Potts, Justin Potts. Super Thank chatted you. Us. Yes. And, she, and he said, my mom is an ISFJ and I'm an INTP. She's, Way and there's like four Y's there, so I'm way way too wow. emotional for me. And we always argue, but she's my mum. Any advice? Uh so <laughs> I would follow up that question with a bunch of other questions. Um, are you over 18 years old? Uh do you have a job? Do you have a car? Do you have your own place? Um uh, how's that going? Uh, if you're not over 18 and you're stuck at home, uh, go to like chess club or something, be the next Bobby Fisher. He was an INTP, right? You know, uh, like seriously, uh, get away from your mother. If that's the case, obviously, you know, we have the responsibilities to, you know, as the 10 commands would say, honor your mother and father. Uh, but like from that standpoint, you know, basically, if you can't educate her as to who you really are and show her that you're an INTP, then the best thing is to get out, get out and away from her, get on your own, develop yourself as a responsible adult, as a responsible male uh, in society, prove to her that you can handle it on her own and that you have your own roof and you are to be respected because you have your own roof at that point in time, because it is your home, not her home, basically. And she was just gonna have to get over it. And then through that uh, relationship uh, and through that respect of your independence and knowing that you're just doing what you're doing, then she'll actually, you'll end up having a better relationship with her. But otherwise, if she sees herself as above you, it's not really going to do that much. He just followed up in the chat. I'm 25 and have my own place. Lol. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So, um, so based on, so based on uh, 25 and his own place, um, so great. Um, read this book. I'm going to put it in chat. Uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. It's available on my website. No more Mr. Nice Guy uh, by uh, Dr. Robert Glover. He's an ENTP. And he has a chapter uh, specifically about uh, men and their mothers. And what was that phrase he called it, Jeb? What was that phrase he used? Being, um, it's like an adjective in there, being something to your mother as a male. Maybe someone in the audience can point this out. No, not subservient. Um, oh, being monogamous to your mother. That's what it was. I think that's the, Ugh. yeah, being monogamous to your mother. So that is a very important psychological issue. It's part of the psychological condition because, uh, like he's, a, he's a psychologist, um, it's this part of the psychological uh, condition known as nice guy syndrome. It is very important that you understand that. So read No More Mr. Nice Guy. After that, uh, watch season six uh, playlist uh, here on the YouTube channel, uh, Mr. Justin Potts, uh, and use that in combination of what you read in No More Mr. Nice Guy. That will give you every tool that you need to be able to deal with your ISFJ mother. I, I, I'm telling you right now, like I, I could go on and on explaining the solution, but that is the solution watch season six or listen to it and read that book. And the audio is like only six hours and you will like be an expert like instantly. And you'll know immediately what you got to do, uh, you know, with, with uh, dealing with your, uh, with your mother. So uh, in that situation, I, I uh -huh. hope, uh, I hope that works out for you. Um, also, Mr. Justin Potts, uh, we have uh, an RNG group on our discord server. If you join our discord uh, server, uh, we, <laughs> we'd really want you to join us uh, and uh, put in pops is running that uh, group. It's a men's group that we have and we're dealing with these complex issues such as ISFJ mothers. I mean, I, I talk about mine all the time at the group uh, and I think we're actually having one tonight. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so that is a thing. So, so be aware of that uh, for sure. Right. I'm, I think that might be uh, Al Potsy. Oh no, that's Robert Potts actually different Potts. 
Uh, okay. Who is also who is also an INTP? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pots, uh, the pots INTPs are taking over the world. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. Uh, somebody asks, is there another lecture on the mature feminine coming out soon? Yes, season thirteen, episode twelve is coming out very soon. I suspect it'll Indeed. be out next week. And I'll be filming right. in a very interesting place when I when I do it. Someone asks, no way I can shut off my any for a little bit so I can sleep. This is a uh, INFP. Uh, learn to master your circadian rhythm, good sir. If you need to learn more about circadian rhythm, uh, look up the okay. book of Jack Cruz. And also go to like fixyourgut.com and put in circadian rhythm and do what it tells you to do. That's what, what I right. would say to that. Yeah, that's a um, nurture issue, not a nature issue. So we got a question from Peter, but we basically answered this one. This is the first question. It's basically the same. Um, can SE DOMs recharge themselves through reading books? Mm, no, that's you want to you, you need to share experiences with other people. That's what I would recommend you do. Be around people and uh -huh. share experiences with them. Uh, now, if you are a TE child, uh, definitely read books and potentially read while you're in a bar. So if you're like an ESFP, sure, that would work out. But if you're an ESTP, mm, probably not going to work. Uh, but I'd recommend that you definitely read uh, when you're not sharing experiences. Unless, of course, reading itself is a shared experience because you're reading to somebody else. And that's a way to get away with both. So, Right. Okay. Did you ever post the personality test that you've developed on the interaction styles? You mentioned it in how to personality type anyone, and I can't seem to find it on your website. Yes, the test, it's coming. Uh, we ran out of money, <laughs> and that's why it wasn't released. Yeah. So that's why we're also pushing to get the Patreon out soon so we can earn money to finish the test so we can get it out to you folks and make it freely available to you. Um, and then when the Patreon's out, the patrons themselves will be able to beta test the test before it is released to the public. But yes, it is mm -hmm. definitely in development. We ran out of cash. That's why it was uh, held up. So uh, we apologize for that, but we had to make some investments in better equipment. And like, for example, like I need to get some soundproofing to get rid of this echo. And we almost got the GoPro up and there's some other things that we had to do from a software standpoint uh, to keep this going. But uh, yes, it was a financial reason. That's why the uh, test is not there, but it is coming. We have the basic logic uh, done. I've seen the basic prototype for it uh, and we're going to be developing it further. And also we need to get additional transcripts out as well. And that was also a financial issue. So uh, just please be patient with us. It is coming. Uh, we haven't given up on that. It, it, uh, if I had my way, it would be out before the end of the year, but uh, I'm not entirely sure we're going to be able to make good on that goal. So probably Q1 of next year, unless things get really good for us financially, then I'll fast track it as soon as possible. So definitely something that's coming. Right on. Um, do you think type... Oh, you've already answered this. Do you think typology can be applied to animals too? We've already answered that. Already answered. Um, how might types have changed over the course of history, and how are they likely to change in the future? In the past, would there have been less NTs and NFs, or would there have been probably been the same proportions as there are now? And maybe uh, more inhibited IR. That's a great question. Uh, Wait, more inhibited IR hidden by the societies of those times. With technological advances in recent years and and years ever moving forward, is there a chance that types like NTs might increase over the other more traditional types like SJs based on the future values of the needs of this future society? <laughs> what a question. So this is a bit this yeah. is a bit of a mouthful. So did you did, did you just read me a chapter out of a book, Job Jab? Is that is that literally what just happened right now? Okay. Huh? No, no, that's no, cool. I'll answer the question. So um, Right, right, right. Well, the TLDR. I'll give you the TLDR. It's basically... Uh, you don't um, need to give me a TL TLDR. I know the TLDR. <laughs> okay. I'm doing it for the audience. Oh, okay, yeah. TLDR so, for them. Because <laughs> there's a bit of a grammatical error, and it makes me sound like I'm a bit dyslexic as I read it. So um, the TLDR of the text is how, how do the proportions of personalities change as a function of time? How were they in the past? 
And does he think that the shift in the future is going to be more towards NTs and NFs as we become a more intellectually based society with automation taking the role of manual labor? Go. Well, uh, actually, I, I don't think so. I think SPs are going to probably be end up um, super, super important uh, in the future, actually, maybe even more so than intuitives. We'll see. It, it might be NTs and SPs, the more pragmatics that end up uh, becoming more of a potential majority. But we really don't know uh, for a fact. We don't know for a fact. We have a lot of working theories, but we don't have to know for a fact why the temperaments are displaced the way that they are, with 70% being sensors, 30% being intuitives. We just don't know. But we have an idea, like a working theory. And the working theory is, is that, you know, as uh, human nurture is applied through various societal models, like for example, Japan is a very NJ society and uh, the United States is an SJ society and Australia is an SP society, for example, as uh, Jab had pointed out, uh, plumbers are much more paid and uh, hireable than uh, someone who has a chemical engineering degree. Uh, right. so, so yes, uh, Aussie land uh, down under is definitely an SP society, but whichever these uh, societies and their overarching temperament that creates a human nurture area and certain kinds of cognition are just not as available there. So like in Japan, you have way more NTs and NFs per capita compared to somewhere that's SJ focused like the United States of America, for example. So that doesn't mean that they're still not going to be there. But uh, if you actually look at subsets of various different communities, you'll see that some types have more dominance than others, right? And there's no real way to know what that was in the past. And because we don't have that, we can't predict that in the future. However, within probably two years from now, uh, we'll have the answer to that question with actual raw data uh, that we will uh, be able to do that and potentially predict how cognition is going to change in the future uh, based on what's happening in the moment and based on all the data that we have archived. So that is definitely something that is coming, uh, but we don't know uh, quite um, quite about that uh, at, quite yet. Okay. Um, let's see. What's our next question? Our next question is, where could I go to meet ESTJ women? Where can I go to meet ESTJ woman, women? The number one place to meet ESTJ women is the gym, hands down. The gym. It's the gym, hands down. The gym. Yeah, the gym. Uh, and if not at the gym, then the beach. And if not at the gym or the beach, uh, then uh, on a boat or on a plane or skydiving or uh, hiking or uh, in Boulder, Colorado at the Olympic Training Center. Uh, oh my! Beach volleyball, yeah, that's where to meet ESTJ Ooh. women. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the next question. Can you do how INTJs compare to ISTPs? You did a similar thing with ESTPs and ENTJs, and ISTPs and INTJs. You compare which types? Sorry, and ISTP. Sorry, and uh, so ISTPs and INTJs. Um, can look similar superficially due to the shared SE and I axis. So this person's asking, can you do a how to how do INTJs compare to ISTPs video? Since you did one between ESTPs and ENTJs. Yes, uh, I will be doing uh, lectures on those. I'm actually as part of uh, our Patreon offering at a certain uh, patron tier, uh, we're actually going to allow people to vote uh, eventually uh, as to allowing patrons to vote as to what kind of content that they like to see coming out next in terms of the user uh, re requested content. And then uh, I'll be producing uh, lectures specifically to those and those additional, what I'm calling them like offhand uh, type comparisons, because the type comparison videos I've done has been very specific. They have the same hero or they have the same parents or they have, they're both NTPs or they're both STPs or, or they're shadow types to each other or they're opposites to each other. You know, like there's always been a specific theme uh, with associated with the, uh, the type comparison uh, lectures, but the ones that are off on the side that are kind of like, they don't really have that much similarities or they're in relation to each other. I just want to know the difference for the sake of knowing. 
uh, we're going to be doing those a little bit differently in the future. So that's that's basically where I would uh, go at it from there. Uh, perfect. Um, let's see. Hi. What is the way different types show love or know they are in love? You talk about men having to be willing to take a bullet for the woman if they want to be intimate. I think I think that statement applies specifically to you as an ENTP and isn't general for most men, just to point that out. Is there any specific examples other than that? And how do women know slash show this? You briefly said women can love any idiot, but it comes down to if she has respect for the man. Hope you can shine a light on this as it relates to types. Thanks. Kissy face. Okay. Um, can you copy and paste that to me in a direct message so I can read that? Sure. Without losing your place? <laughs> uh, nope. What is the way the different types show love or how, or how are they in love? Uh, one day, okay. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm actually answering this question in the romantic uh, compatibility uh, series. And I'll also be answering it, some of it in the sexual response uh, series as well. We're actually talking about the specific sexual response of all of the types and that will be coming out at a future date. And I don't want to spoil any of that. So I'm not going to answer that question directly tonight. Uh, perfect. Uh, and even though I lost my place, I am back. Can you do the D and D alignment series for MBTI? Like how you said ENTPs were chaotic neutral or something. I can't remember. Thanks. Uh, yes. Uh, we do have that. Let me go back to my lecture ideas and requests. Um, we do have that, um, already on the schedule. Uh, Definitely, but it's going to be a lot. It's going to be way beyond because we're we're going to be looking at uh, not just like people's egos. It's going to be really deep because we're actually going to be looking at all four sides of the mind and what their specific tropes are attached to each uh -huh. four sides of the mind per type. So it's going to get like super mega deep on that. Um, and uh, I may actually bring in a, a guest uh, to do those lectures with me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, they're um, they're very much more expertise in the tropes land, and I'm more on the uh, Jungian analytical psychology land, and it's going to be a fun collaboration. Uh, but that's definitely something to look forward to in the future. Ooh, this is a long one. Another book. Ooh, all right. Chapter of the book. Yes, I've, I've, I've got a book. It's got 16 chapters. Okay. Okay. So, from the live stream. I am mulling over what seems to be like an out of place choice in your attribution, sorry, attribution of cognitive theory as evidence of intelligent design. There's a pretty huge void there. Lack of understanding shouldn't be used to pr prove or disprove anything, no matter how logical you think yes, you are. Yes, that's being true. That's a logical fallacy. Yes. The question here is why do you even make that assertion? Isn't having a working human-based theory enough? Why add a wild extrapolation based on a wild deduction? I think there's far too many unexplored possibilities and not too much data to gain before being reasonably certain of intelligent design or not. Just wanted to add that I wouldn't ask if I weren't receptive to an answer. Usually, something like this would be where I nope out but I respect your content, diligence, and unapologetically NT approach to discussion. For all the rants or tangents, I usually keep up 100% and don't mind at all. This was the first one where I mind. I'm too doubtful, suspicious of religious implications or motives. I will say the content you're providing is more valuable than that. Whew. All right. Well, uh, thank you for coming back down from uh, Mount Everest there, uh, Jab. Much appreciated. Uh, so, uh, my second grade. Basically, TLDR audience, this guy's like, why are you saying, why are you claiming that uh, personality type is evidence of intelligent design? It seems like a logical fallacy to me. And, uh, you know, why are you doing this? And honestly, I'm not going to like make a straw man argument uh, at all uh, and call into question the credibility of this person and use additional logical fallacies. Uh, I mean, they're technically right from a logical fallacy point of view, um, but 
uh, from it's just it's it's really just anecdotal evidence from my own personal experience. And of course, me saying anecdotally, okay, well, hold on, that's also a logical fallacy, right? Okay, sure. I mean, I'll admit that too. But uh, you know, take it for what you will. I mean, if you don't see it as evidence for uh, intelligent design, then you don't. I'm not here to tell you that you are, nor am I here to like preach churchianity to you or anything religious whatsoever. I'm not here to do that. I mean, make up your minds yourselves. Uh, from mm -hmm. from my point of view, it's definitely an argument for intelligent design because, you know, if uh, if, if macro evolution, because I, I am very pro micro evolution, I, I absolutely maintain micro evolution is this is a standard. It is very important and, and obvious, uh, very obvious. And, and, and Darwin's research and various other researchers constantly prove uh, uh, micro evolution. But from a macro evolution standpoint, I'm not really seeing it. I'm just not. Uh, and uh, and the evidence there, I mean, it's it's iffy, right? And and I guess the same level of iffiness uh, could be applied to me claiming that uh, personality type is evidence of intelligent design. Okay, I, I could I could see that. Yeah, definitely. There's there's definitely the same level of gray area there that could be applied. It's just logic. I'm just using straight logic. Do I have any actual 100% evidence of it? No, not really. Will I have evidence of it one day? I think so. I actually do think so. I think um, after we're able to answer some serious questions after some intense data mining of the uh, human population and applying that to, to personality type and having it be accurate and available from a worldwide uh, source, I think we actually will be able to answer some of those questions. But until then, quite frankly, I don't know. So that's why I maintain it is a theory and it is a theory that I am more in tune with than macroevolution. I maintain that intelligent design as a result of observing uh, uh, human cognition is a better theory than the theory of macroevolution while simultaneously upholding the theory of microevolution. Uh, so that's basically my stance on it. So forgive me if you felt or thought that I was just trying to make, make an argument for religion here because I'm not. I could actually care less. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel kind of good about this. You know, I'm putting my uh, second grade education to test here, reading out these sentences out loud. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, on Mount Everest, and and you're probably heading towards, uh, you know, uh, Kilimanjaro next. You know, exactly, exactly. Um, next question is: Do you have thoughts on whether the field of music therapy can be used as a way for people who are stru stuck in their unconscious due to trauma to recover? Music therapy is an interesting field, and I was curious as to if you thought it could have any practical application on the nature side or if you believe it's more on the part of the natural area? Uh, actually, it's more on the nature side, yes. And yes, musical therapy is absolutely something I would recommend. Uh, you just have to be careful how you're applying it. Uh, when you're applying it to SI users, uh, SI users are typically more skilled with violins, cellos, uh, those types of uh, instruments, even pianos, because it takes a lot of self-discipline and a lot of self-mastery to be able to uh, master those instruments. Uh, whereas SE users are more of a guitar standpoint uh, and, and their minds and their brains are wired differently. So there's different kinds of music for different kinds of people. So I recommend identifying what their kind of stack is, what type of person that person is, and then applying the appropriate uh, instruments and songs for musical therapy specifically to those people. And this is why I recommend consistently uh, activities like capoeira as a martial art, because it has a lot of music and a lot of dance attached with it. And it actually is very therapeutic for a lot of people because it gets a lot of things um, handled all at once. You can have the dance expression, you can have the musical expression, or you can have the fact that you're taking someone down in front of the band uh, expression. So uh, it hits a lot of outlets all at once. And that's why I think capoeira is one of the most amazing forms of martial arts out there because it's not so singularly focused and it has so many components to it because it is a martial artist culture. Something I absolutely recommend if you are an NP and also... Uh, right. Basically, any type could technically participate if they wanted to, um, but it's really useful for NPs uh, from a therapeutic standpoint. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay. The next question is, what is the best self-discipline method for an INTP? 
What is the best self-discipline method for an INTP? Uh, forcing yourself to get outside of your comfort zone and uh, burning the boats while you do it so you have no way of escape and you're absolutely forced to adapt. Force yourself to adapt to situations you've never done for or dealt with. Definitely. Perfect. Um, they also ask if you can type Carl Jung and Freud, but that'll probably be an episode in the future. Yep. Um, thoughts on INFP, INTP relationships and ENFP, INTP. So basically the thoughts on NFP, INTP relationships. So not a relationship I would recommend at all. And uh, everyone's trying to expect the other person to make them comfortable. And everyone's trying to get the other person to be motivated into doing something. Uh, not recommended. So yeah, I don't don't go in that direction at all. Please. Okay. Uh, um, how That's, about ISTP, INTP relationships? Have we covered that? Yes, I think we actually covered that earlier tonight. Um, yes. Let's uh, let's get close to wrapping up here, uh, Jeb. Yeah, I'm thinking. I was thinking the same. Um, all right, I'm going to do one more Discord question, and then we'll answer a few YouTube ones. Okay. Okay. So. How does mental illness present itself in the different types? Have we answered this one before? Uh, like not today, but like previous Q&A. Well, one, yes, yeah, so we have. And one, I am not a psychiatrist, so I don't know enough about mental illness to actually comment on that. So okay. I would probably want to bring like a, a psychiatrist guest speaker who I trust and actually respect and then have that conversation with them. It's probably how I would go about doing that. But I am not a psychiatrist. I actually try to stay away from psychiatry as much as possible. I kind of maintain that psychiatry can actually end up being way more damaging in the long run instead of actually therapeutic in certain cases, and a lot of cases. Uh, but I'm also very biased when I say that, like very biased. So take that with many, many, many grains of salt. Uh, but I also maintain that psyche. It's like psychiatry also has these horrible labels and it's not really based on as much evidence as people would say or claim. The studies uh -huh. are not exactly ideal. And uh, I think oftentimes psychiatry is throwing out the baby with the bathwater and I don't appreciate uh, that at all. I think psychology and self-actualization should actually be the standard and psychiatry as a science could potentially be looked at and judged and to see if it's something we actually want to keep around or start over with or potentially throw out entirely. Uh, but I, I, again, I don't know enough to comment. I'm very ignorant there. So uh, potentially uh, I'd probably need to bring in an additional expert on that or, uh, or learn more about it myself. Uh, so, but yeah. All right. So have we got any YouTube questions? I'm going to pin that there for next episode. Have we got any YouTube questions? Uh, do ENFPs uh, do well as writers and IT related work from Amon? Uh, and uh, ENFPs do very well as writers, actually, uh, although oftentimes they hire ghostwriters for sure. And IT related work, uh, I have known a few ENFPs to be good at IT. It just depends on the kind of IT that they're doing. If they're doing like, if they're like being like a, a cable monkey or a code monkey, uh, definitely not something an ENFP I'd recommend them doing. Uh, but if it's about like managing servers, doing customer service, uh, following the same process over and over, depending on which server they're working on, okay, sure, I could definitely see them doing pretty well on that. So it, it's just, it just depends, basically. Leslie Miller asks on the Super Chat, what is the sexiest thing an INTP female can do? Um, I think I can answer that one. All right, go for it. Be awkwardly cute. Yes, it's so true. Yes, it is so true. Be awkwardly cute. Uh, yes. Yeah, Periani's like right on the money. Maybe sexy librarian. Yes. Sort of, but you, you you don't want it to be overtly sexy. Sorry, like you, the, you want it you the, want it to be a package that you open and the sexy's underneath. 
You yeah. want to anticipate the sexy. Yes, anticipate the sexy. Although I maintain the sexy librarian is better with an INFJ or an ISTJ, hands down, personally. I don't think the INTP uh, would be ideal in the sexy librarian uh, uh, trope, for sure. Uh, but yeah. Right. It needs to be like a nerdy librarian, and then like once you unwrap the package, then it's like sexy in its own cute, awkward way. It's like it's like all of a sudden the INTJ or the ENTJ found the INTP and it's like, wow, you're kind of boring. And then when they finally get into the bedroom, it's like, wow, you're like this insane tiger. I didn't even expect. I mean, where did where did this come from? And it's as you know, it's like as they're chomping <laughs> down on them, like Arr. it's like, okay, wow, that was uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, and actually, actually, our our boy Dolph Devrish here says, "At Leslie, be yourself." Yes, that is absolutely true. The kind yeah. of people who you are going to attract, who you want to, who you want to be with, are the kind of people who are going to like you for being yourself. So don't be fake. Be yourself, because you know, even though maybe there's someone you can get by being fake, that relationship might not work out in the long run. Yeah, so you're better off going with someone who wants to be with you for being you, and not someone else. Yeah, and I I would like to give uh, Dolph Dervish a shout out. I enjoy Dolph Dervish's. YouTube comments a lot. I yeah. actually look forward to them because they're very challenging <laughs> comments. <laughs> and I read them oh, all. Enjoy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But I mean, it's it definitely uh, some spice uh, in there for sure. Um, and uh, and also uh, it's fish three, AKA lizard wizard. We love you too. Thank you very much. And uh -huh. I, saw, I saw another question there. James, can uh, people have good relationships with their shadow counterparts? Yes, absolutely. That's the ideal relationship. I recommend it for sure. Um, anything else? Come on, throw, throw some questions. Yeah, one more question. One more. Yeah, come on. This is a poor question, but can you join the Discord for free or do you have to pay money? You could join it for free. Uh, you have to produce a telephone number to be able to join, but I don't know what that number is. And it goes in the Discord's right. database and it's used for security verification purposes and that's it. So you can join it's, it for it's free. Basic, it's basically Discord's authenticator for you to access servers which have a certain security level. So we have the highest security level, which means you need to have your Discord account authenticated by your phone. Yes. Well, they go into their shadow and Artur number five. Uh, I don't recommend that. Um, and Frodo Swaggins, the link is in the description of all of our lectures and all of our videos. Yep. Just yep. go to just go YouTube, Instagram, books, uh, website, podcast, Discord, Meetup. Got everything yeah. in there. Everything you could even dream. Yeah. Yeah, and and no, you don't warp to zero at the keep star. <laughs> I, I mean, as as Van Diemen's demise found out with uh, lighting that Sino Cyril field and dropping that Ragnarok on top of that Fortizar into the jaws of snuff. Great. Uh, would yeah. you rather fight one thousand INTP sized ENTJs or a single ENTJ sized INTP? Uh, the single one, definitely, because yeah. I am an ENTP, and we like uh, having that one singular strike uh, that uh, lands that death blow instead of having to deal with multiple uh, at one time. So anyway, I think that's uh, that's it for us tonight, Mr. Jab. Uh, yeah, we got it. We got, got him. It. We got it. I need to uh, get this on the podcast, and I need to make myself some food because I'm insanely hungry, and then I am going mm -hmm. to bed because I am exhausted, and I need food. Right. And, yeah, so also, um, Jab, I'm probably going to call you too. But anywho. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you all for coming tonight. It's been fantastic. Remember, uh, we're not going to be doing live streams next week. Uh, not with me, because I'm going to be on vacation with my two children uh, in another state of the union here in the United States. And uh, I'm going to be super uh, busy doing that. I got a lot of stuff planned for that. Um, I might be firing up some lectures in the meantime, but yes. Yep. I may be doing that fictional typing event. It won't, will not be a live stream. Um, grain of salt, take it with a grain of salt because they're fictional characters. It all comes down to whether the writer was a good writer or not. So um, on that note, 
if you're going to be there on Tuesday, uh, it'll be the typical night of the uh, typical time of the streams. Hashtag not late. Yeah. I, I will make that commitment to you guys. Um, this will be this won't be a live stream. It'll just be in like the general chat or something. So you will all be able to talk and chime in, provided we are you are being productive. Yeah, the ban hammer though. I have the ban hammer though. So uh, watch your six. Um, I will <laughs> see you guys on Tuesday, maybe later tonight. I think I have a conversation I need to make with uh, Chase. And cool. after that, uh, yeah, maybe I will show up in the chat. So if you want to hang around in Discord, I might see you in, I don't know, 20 to an hour, 20 minutes to an hour. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, cool. Well, uh, see you all later, and thank you all for coming, and thank you for Ciao. being patient with us tonight. So we'll uh, see you on the flip side or the other side. So have a good night.